Wayne Garza, and we are here coming off of a Medina Valley football win at Hondo, 41-11. to uh, Did the volleyball team win last night? Yes. They did. They won. Um, and we are going into a game this week with Lockhart, and we're going to have uh, Coach Eric Sosa here and a couple of the players, and later on we're going to have uh, Coach Griggs and a couple of her players. And then later on for our community corner, we're going to have Mr. Royce Grove on here to talk a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'd like to thank you, Coach Sosa, for joining us here the, this evening. Um, yes, sir, thank you. Um, coming off a win at Hondo, a couple of wins, so uh, got a little bit of momentum coming into district play. Um, what did you like from your offense previously, and what do you want to kind of see going forward going into district? Yeah, uh, the biggest thing offensively is just execution. Uh, we knew uh, it was going to be a tough game, especially with the weather, the site change, everything like that. Um, and the opponent every time we play hondo it's kind of a, a, a dog fight so uh, just kind of going out there and just executing doing doing your 111th and we we uh we preach that all the time is just do your 111th and if everyone does it then then uh, we're gonna have successful plays and uh, obviously we had uh three turnovers uh those are silly little uh, little fumbles and even with the weather you got to be able to have ball security and uh that's something that we've uh, we've harped on this week and and uh, trying to do a better job protecting the ball. Okay, Maury. A couple of the uh, penalties, and it's it's it always seems it's not when they, it's not that they happen. It's when they happen. Mm -hmm. It's always third down and one. It pushes you back, yes, or you sir. get a good gain on first down. And you got second. And you got the change on your side, and a false start. Mm -hmm. And and that's something that's just that can be corrected. But what do you accompany that? Just being being young in the season or learning a new system because this is the yeah. third year i mean <clears throat> yeah it's just lack of focus i think and uh um those those hard penalties um the personal fouls th those are unacceptable and uh, it's playing within yourself and uh the holdings those things will happen because you're running you're running your feet and then they may get out out of uh out of your lane a little bit but um uh we, we can we can handle those it, it's the silly offsides it's the uh the late hits, the real late late hits that that we uh, that we we get upset about. But uh, if as long as we play Panther football, then uh, between the whistles, then then that's what uh, that's what we coach and that's what we harp on. Well, I believe during the game there was only uh, Medina Valley got called for only one 15-yard infraction on mm -hmm. the crack block or the chop block. <coughs> so that's something that you've been improving on, and that's mm -hmm. hard. You know, when you're engaged, that's hard for yeah. them linemen with the offense oh, yeah. that, that y'all run to not want to take the other guy out, yeah. and especially and that, when that's what it, it calls for. And that's uh, that's a big thing of just knowing you're 111th. And sometimes it's uh, the chop block is because, well, one guy didn't do his job. And uh, it, it's sometimes it said, well, dang it, it was the guy that, that cut. that uh, that that's It's his fault. Well, it might have been the guy that posted him up that he was supposed to dip and rip and uh, so those are the kind of things that we're kind of trying to iron out. And now that it's district, it's, uh, we know that it's 0-0. Everyone's 0-0 right now. It's a new season, and we call this the third quarter of the season. The first quarter was the scrimmages. Uh, second quarter was the preseason, and now we're in that third quarter uh, right out of halftime. So uh, this is the season that really counts. So uh, just kind of correct all those mistakes, and, and uh, let's go have some fun in district. Do you, do you call the plays? Are you the offensive coordinator? Yes, you are? Yes, okay. Yeah. I, I just want to ask you this because – you don't get to see this a lot. How fortunate are you to have a running back like Gibson who can grind it out and get you some extra yards and then have somebody with the speed of Logan Masters to kind of oh, yeah. counter that because a lot of people have a one-dimension back who can't do that, but mm -hmm. you're versatile enough to have both of those. How does that help you as a play caller? Uh, it's, it's great, especially with the, uh, the six guys up front um, with, our, with our offensive line and uh, strong in with Aaron Sotelo. I mean, they're, they're the ones that let James – uh, not get hit until three or four yards past the past the line of scrimmage. So uh, James is a great player. Um, he he he's the workhorse for us, and obviously Logan and and uh, our tailbacks Wesley and and um, uh, Jacob. Pardo and yeah. Solace. Yes, uh, Pardo and, and Solace. They, they they help on the on the sweep game and the and the quick or the tackle traps. So uh, it, it it's great that you can't just key in on one guy. And uh, if if they're going to take away the inside, then we're going to go outside. They're going to try to go out or take away the outside. Then uh, that, that's the beauty of this offense is uh, very uh, multifaceted, and and you can't just if you can try to stop one guy, but uh, we're we're going to be able to to spread the wealth around, and we we're confident in that. We're confident in our offensive line to be able to uh, 
to make all the blocks that we need, and we're confident in the in the backs that are going to grab the ball. You, know, you had mentioned uh, James and and Masters, but as Coach Sosa said, you got Salas and and uh, Wesley Pardo that comes in there, and Pardo on that trap play, he's he's oh, yeah. dangerous. Yep. He hits that hole, and yep. I, I'm not. He may not be as fast as Masters, but his from start to top speed. Mm -hmm. Is quick. I mean, he oh, yeah. is. And that, he that's is that tailback position. It's supposed to be that shifty guy. And uh, Salas and, and Paro, they do a really good job of being able to have uh, have shifty hips. And um, and that's what that tailback position calls for. And they do a great job and uh, for what they've been asked to do. And they 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 executed well. And, and you know, the first the first uh, coaches show we had, uh, your dad brought the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Last week, Coach Mo brought the defensive line. And I don't know if it motivated him, these Sammy's notchers or what, but that defense was flying all over the oh, place. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the, the front four were doing their job because Taylor Weir, I love Robin Roberts to death, and I want to quote one from her, but he was in fuego. That mm -hmm. guy was all over the field. He was having oh, yeah. him a game. And, and you were playing kind of shorthanded because of the suspensions. Mm -hmm. And you had some new guys stepping up in different positions. You had Dawson Grove that kind of moved – to a linebacker mm -hmm. spot, and then Mason Doyen was also filling in, and so was uh, the Steubing boy. So you had a lot of people on the defensive side that were filling in, mm -hmm. and from what we've seen on the offensive side too, running backs are interchangeable. One does one thing good, the other one does the other. That That's a luxury that's oh, great. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we're excited for for this season is um, we we – we harp on the guys that you're one play away. You never know. Those backups, you, you need to prepare because you're one play away. And in the sense of, uh, of Grant Snyder, loved the kid to death. He made a, a bonehead mistake versus Bernie, and it cost him for, uh, for a half. And so we needed to have someone to step up. And that, that's a credit to the defensive staff, getting those guys ready. And uh, same thing with the, uh, with the offensive staff and, and the offensive uh, the backups because, um, like, Jacob is our starter, but Wesley is right there, and it, it's able to do that. Diego, with uh, the backup with um, with James and and Zeke and and uh, and Caden for for Logan. It, it's one of those things where you never know whenever your your number is going to be called, and once you have that opportunity, that's the opportunity that you have to shine. Yep. Diego, that's number forty six. Uh, Morales, twenty four. Okay, well forty six was in there also at the end of the yeah, game. That's Zeke. That's, that's Zeke. Zeke. Yeah, okay, Zeke. Zeke Vill, uh, Real thing. Real thing. Yeah. Yep. 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 And uh, looking looking forward to Lockhart this week. Uh, mm -hmm. I, from what I hear, they kind of run the same kind of offense oh, that Medina yeah. Valley does. Mm -hmm. What What are you expecting from them on Friday uh, night? Well, it's going to be a dogfight. I mean, the past two seasons, it's been a dogfight. It's gone to the pretty much the last last drive. I know uh, in '16 we had a, we had to milk the clock, and uh, we ended up scoring. A, two-minute drive type of situation and then last year it was a 7-14 ball game and um, they're coached well it's um, it's early in the season for them they're they're um, they're on a high note right now and uh, it's it's district ball game everyone's 0-0 everyone's 0-0 and um, they're a good ball club good ball club they've been running this offense for for quite a while and we know how dangerous it is so um, we're we're doing coach Mo has a great game plan and the defense has been working on it and um, we've got a. It's, it's going to be a short ball game, I think. I mean, they're going to run the ball. We're going to run the ball, and it's going to be a, a grind out, grind out type of game. Yeah, it's got to. That's got to help you a lot, being that your defense sees that offense mm -hmm. all the time, and oh. now you're going to go play a team that runs that. That's got to be a big, yes. big help to for you. For sure, for sure. Well, and, and also, you've you've been working on a few things. I know the the game against Bernie. A lot of people in the stands were saying, well, "Why did we go away from?" Mm -hmm. What was working? We built up a, a four touchdown lead, and now they're let. And and that's because y'all were implement. You were implementing mm -hmm. more things, so the next opponent has something else to look for. The next person, the next opponent. Oh yeah. When when you face your mirror image, as you're going to face on the other side of the ball with Lockhart's offense, mm -hmm. you've, it's those trickeration plays. Mm -hmm. I say trickeration, the ones that they're not expecting. That you're going to hit the home runs on. Can we expect some of those? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to make it fun for the guys. I mean, this is uh, week four, but really we've been we've been going at this for about seven weeks now. So uh, uh, we have some some tricks in our bag that we're um, we wanted to run against Hondo, but uh, with with the score, with the uh, weather, 
uh, we didn't want to um, do that and kind of risk that. And this is the real season, so it's it's we're going to unleash our our chamber and, no, and leave nothing in the in the uh, chamber. So we, we've we've got to go and we've got to get this win. It's very important for us to start district out one and zero um, and and then keep our our uh, goals intact. Absolutely, and uh, coach, I'd like to thank you for giving us the time here this evening. I think we're going to. You you got something, Dwayne? You want to ask a question? Hey, coach, just real quick, um, can you give us a little bit of background of you? Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know what your background is. Um, if you want to start out, what, what high school you you went to, and and let the um, I know a lot of people know that you played college football. So you mm -hmm. want to kind of tell us a little bit about what what, what went on there? Yeah, I um, I went to Beeville, um, A. C. Jones High School in Beeville, Texas. Um, played football there under my dad and, and was able to, uh, my brother was a receivers coach there for two years, so that was pretty cool. After uh, after high school, I uh, went to Texas State, actually, signed out of Texas State, um, then got smart, transferred out to UTSA. End, end uh, of interview, end of interview. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> went to Texas State, the opportunities were better there for me as a uh, football player and got to play under Coach Coker and uh, Coach Bush and, and Coach Brown, and it, it was a great situation over there. Played for three years. Then after that, took a GA spot at uh, University of Houston. Was there for two years. Was able to uh, to win a Peach Bowl there, um, beat Florida State. And then after that Florida State game, it was kind of uh, God was leading me to the to the high school route. And then uh, um, God was able to put Dad into Coach Souza into this uh, this this great. So this here. is your first high school stop, first correct? First high school spot. Yeah, don't don't be modest about yourself. You're a great a great quarterback over at mm -hmm. UTSA, and, and Thank um, you. you've got uh, your two schools, one that recruited you and one you played for playing this weekend. Oh, yeah. So uh, you oh. got a prediction on this game? Uh, it, it's going to be a UTSA win. I know that for there sure. There you go. I mean, we're 2-0 uh, we're and right now against those Bobcats. So we're gonna Yes, you are, and, I, and I'll give you credit for that, yep. though. Yeah, you all are. So, uh, Jerry, you want to go ahead and uh, if you have any more questions, maybe we can close it out with him. No. Um, we can still talk about uh, UTSA if you want. <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> no, 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 we can go there. I, I was actually at UTSA the last year when you started. Awesome. That was my last year there was the first year they had football. Really? Uh, we'll yeah. be there tailgating this weekend, so. Awesome. We'll get to see it. Yep. So, uh, Coach, thank you yes, for, for thank being you here with us. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break real quick, and then we're going to come back with some of the players. Uh, you're listening to uh, – Supper at Sammy's, or what are we Sports called? For Sports supper. for Supper at Sammy's. Um, you're listening to that on the MV Broadcast Network, and we'll return in a moment. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you all. Thank you all. Single game or a season, and you want to be part of the action. Here at Medina Valley Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple Jeremy. sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season, and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-0904 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. At North Park Chevrolet in Castorville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Welcome back to Sammy's Restaurant. We are live here and we're going to have a some of the players on, uh, we're going to have uh, Jeremy Martinez, Garrett Leggett, and Hector Herrera here to talk with us. And uh, we're going to start with Jeremy Martinez. 
And Jeremy, why don't you tell us wh what what year are you? What position do you play? Uh, I'm a senior, and I play linebacker. And I mean, we're just having a great year right now. So. Yep. Uh, good win over Hondo last week. Uh, tell us a little bit about about the game last week. Uh, we came out with a lot of confidence. Uh, we had head high, and we didn't really want to think of the worst. We just had our head high all the time, and we just kept grinding out all the time. And what, what's kind of been the attitude headed up to uh, the first district game this week? Just win, win, win. Just yeah. win, win, win. <laughs> That's good. good. That's a good answer. Mari? Uh, what position do you play? I play linebacker. Linebacker? Do you play any special teams? Uh, I, I was on kickoff last week. So. You were? Okay. What What else do you do? Do you play any other sports in uh, high I school? Run, I run cross country. I do powerlifting and track. So you all had to meet this? I you didn't run this weekend. What what do you do? You uh, uh, in track a field event or running event? Distance. Long distance. What what thirteen? What do they call it? Thirteen twenty or sixteen hundred? Which thirty two hundred? Thirty two hundred. Okay, two miles. And how yep. many laps is that around the track? Eight. A lot. It's eight. It's one more than I can run. <laughs> uh, you have any aspirations after high school to play any sports, or you got any schools you're looking to go to, or Right now, I'm just looking around, probably go to Air Force. Air Force? Air Force? Nothing wrong with that. Nope. So, what do you, you I know, I don't want to put you on the spot with predictions or anything, but I know it's Wednesday. Y'all got a walkthrough, I guess, tomorrow? Yes, sir. How does the team look like they're responding? You think y'all will be ready to go? We'll be ready. I mean, everyone, if we do everything right all week like we have been, we should be good. So as as linebacker, are you middle linebacker, outside linebacker, or y'all just rotate wherever you're needed? Uh, last week I was at outside. This week I moved to inside. So, when you see Lockhart across the field, what are you what are you keying on? What are you looking at on their offense as far as where you're going to go? If the right now we are mainly covering, we mainly run. I mean, most of the plays we run, so right we run plays. Like so you so hope them run. front four guys take yeah. care of the blockers, so that frees the linebackers up to make the yes, stops in the hole, huh? Yes, sir. You going to be ready to play? Yes, sir. Great job. Thank you. Handing the mic over now to Garrett Leggett. Garrett is the swing man on the offense. And how many touchdowns have you scored this year so far, Garrett? Um, so far in a game, I only have one, but I believe with scrimmages, I have five. Five total. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, I know. I know that you're a running team, but uh, you do throw the ball. Yes. How is that as a wide receiver, knowing that you're more inclined to run the football than you know get thrown to? I mean. Honestly, like when we're down on the line, if uh, if I can make a good block, know that like we got Logan behind us, going to run that ball to the end zone. It's a, uh, I think it's more of a better feeling than catching that ball uh, and getting a couple yards. Then uh, like it's better to me to block for him than it is to get my ball, just because yeah. I know that I help my teammate go. Yep, and I know that you have a pretty good height advantage on yes, most people that you line up against. <laughs> I mean that's. How does that feel? I mean, when you go up there and you've got four inches on somebody and you just, yeah, I can go up over you and get the ball, that, that's got to help you out a lot. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, like, if I know I'm going to get the ball, I'm just like, hey, Alec, give me a ball here. Just let me get up over him because, I mean, it's really, it's, it's pretty easy getting up over those Yeah, guys. for a quarterback, that's got a, that's a big help for them because you can, you can get the ball up there and get it out of harm's way and give you a chance to make the play. Yes, sir. Yep. A little emotions after that touchdown Friday yeah, night? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I let the emotion, my emotions get the best of me on that one. I, I kind of regret that. Was that the Heisman pose that you were giving, or, <laughs> or what was that? Um, no, I was just basically making sure he knew that he couldn't, he, he couldn't, couldn't guard couldn't me. He couldn't cover you? Yes, sir. Well, it was evident because he couldn't. <laughs> and yes, there's sir. been a few other ones that haven't been able to cover you this year also. So, what, uh, you, I don't want you to predict the score, but I want you to tell the audience you predict a, a score for number seven. Um... No, I don't. I don't really have a score. I'm, I'm hoping we can do about like we did to Honda, where we shut them out with our defense, most most of the way through the game. And I know our offense is going to be good. It always is. We always we've been really good at driving the ball down the field this year. And you're a senior this year. Yes, sir. Any other sports do you play? I play baseball and run track. What do you run in track? Um, 200, and then I'm high jumper. High jumper. Yes, sir. And you do play baseball? You said. I do. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> and what position? I'm a pitcher. 
Um, and you've been, you've just signed to I just committed play baseball to, somewhere, correct? Yes, sir. I just committed to Tarleton to be a two-way guy, a uh, pitcher and first baseman with them. So, so what, what can we look forward to this year? How many miles per hour on that fastball? Um, right now I'm currently at 88. I'm hoping to get like 91, 92 before the season's over. Yes, sir. Um, they're sending me to Seattle as soon as my high school. Uh, as soon as I graduate, they'll send me off to Seattle for three months, and then I'll come back ready to go as a freshman in college. Is that play, playing on a team? Um, it's training with a – they're called driveline. It's just like a lot of weighted balls. Well, good, good. Good yes, luck sir. to you in the future. Yep, thank you. Good luck this weekend. Yes, Absolutely. Yep. Um, next, we're going to have uh, Hector Herrera on. And, and what position do you play? I play outside linebacker. Outside linebacker. And what uh, what grade are you in? Senior. Senior. Um, what – what did you think about the game last week, and, and what's kind of the attitude leading up to the Lockhart game? Well, we had a, a lot of hype during the, like, before for first quarter. We decided that if we just do our job and do what our coaches coach us to do, then we'd come out with a good uh, ball game. <coughs> do y'all, do you know the history between Medina Valley and Hondo, how big a rivalry it is? Do y'all um, know that, or, or could we ask the linemen... <laughs> last week and they well we really don't but, but this is this that game is big game to me i didn't think it was a rival game i just thought of it as another game that we should win and play as another game yeah. and and you know when we all were going to school if we would lose that game we wouldn't sleep for a whole week because we <laughs> because we knew everybody yeah that, that played i mean we we grew up together and we associate you know and it, it's different with with the numbers so that's what we were kind of asking. What, what, other than that aspect, what motivated you just to play the game, just for the love of the game? Playing with uh, my brothers on the on the in the game, having fun with them, uh, getting some enthusiasm after every single play. If we get a big play, we run up to them, give them a high five, tell them good job. Let's do it again. Are you involved in any special teams? Uh, no, sir. Just play the okay. Now, who who is? Who do you go in to fill in for? Who who is Taylor, it? Taylor Weir. Taylor Weir. Sure. And what are you, what are you going to be keying on? Looking across the the line of scrimmage at, at the Lockhart lines. What what is? I know he said he wants to look and see where they're blocking so he can fill in the gaps. Is that the same as what what you're? Well, I want to look in the, to look at C gap first and see if they cut in there. And then if not, well, the running back likes to go to the sideline, but we're going to try to push them inside because they don't like to get hit. But then. We're still going to see him drop back and uh, see if they throw any inside passes or not. And I know y'all have heard the hype, but he comes in as Austin's top running back per yards in the Austin area in Class 5A. So y'all going to have your work work cut out. Have, have, have y'all watched some film and watched the speed? Is he a big back or is he a quick back or is he he's not every He's a small. He's He has speed and quickness. He's small. So if you keep him inside, he comes off the ball really well. Do, do they do they get try to get him in the ball in all formations? Try to get him out wide. Try to throw any passes to they him. Mostly have him in the back. Their fullbacks in the front most of the time. Good. Yeah, and that I mean that's going to be big for your defensive ends and stuff. Just getting up field and containing them and pushing them back inside. That's probably going to end up being one of the you keys. You need to keep them off yeah. the linebackers. Yeah. Well, they might test us on some pass plays just to see how we do. So, what is your responsibility in the passing game? To drop back and see if there's any inside uh, passes, like the first first inside routes. <coughs> like looking for like tight ends coming over the middle of the field, backs coming or, out. Um, reverse plays. So, so you and Jeremy, y'all's job is pretty much the the same. Y'all are going to drop back and. and Make them cover. Y'all, y'all got the inside coverage, or are they going to be behind y'all in the zone where y'all need to bat the ball down? Y'all going to have any opportunities at, at interceptions, or are they going to be catching well, the ball? Hopefully, in front of we will. Hopefully, we'll get a pick to, uh, on Friday. Well, good. Yep. Any you play any other sports? Uh, track. Track. What are you running track? The 100 meter, 200 meter, and 400 meter. And wow. Long jump. Long wow. Jump. Well, good luck. Thank you, sir. Yep. Um, well, thank you guys for, for being here this evening and uh, taking the time out to talk with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and, again, thanks to Coach Sosa for being here also. I think next we're going to move into the volleyball portion, but we're going to go ahead and take a break real quick and come back. You're listening uh, to our sports with for supper at Sammy's um, on the MV Broadcast Network, and we'll continue in a moment. This is MVBN. 
the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. At North Park Chevrolet in Casterville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks, and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit, with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Welcome back here to Sammy's. As we've just finished the football portion of our broadcast here, we're going to move on to volleyball, and I'm going to give it to Dwayne for that. Thank you, Jared. Um, I want to welcome Coach Deesa Griggs back. It's been a couple of weeks since we've talked, Coach. Let me give you a microphone here. So over right now from volleyball, overall we you have a 21-6 overall record and you're six and one in district. Um, how does that compare to last year about this time? Um, it's considerably better. <laughs> it's it's great is what yeah, it is. Yeah, it's good. Y'all are doing a wonderful job right now, winning games, and it's really exciting right now. It's an exciting time to go watch Medina Valley volleyball, let me tell you. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, so a couple of past games. So last Friday, you won at home against Somerset, three sets to zero. And uh, last night, we won against Floresville at Floresville, three sets to two. You want to talk a little bit about those two matches? Um, well, Friday, I felt like we just kind of um, walked through the game. Uh, this team does not get real hyped up. They're pretty, they're pretty mellow. I, I call them steady betties, and that's good if you realize that's what they are. Um, they don't get real crazy. They just kind of go with the flow. Lots of things don't bother them. Last night, I felt like, you know, the gym is huge, first of all. So there's a spatial awkwardness. You know, that was the first time I had been in Floresville's gym. It is huge. It's wide. Yeah. It, so it, you feel like there's, like, this depth perception problem and it was freezing and not to and, mention the temperature um i i knew when i was tossing balls in warm-up and we were having a hard time just getting the ball over the net that you know this might be a little bit more challenging than what it needed to be yeah and and, and i think that the difference between this team versus last year's team is that you guys finish yeah. Um, you yeah. may not come out on fire, but, but we definitely finish on fire. Right. And I think that's the difference so far anyway. It's it's the even kill. We didn't, you know, we lost the first set. It uh, didn't really bother us. We came out, put them away the second set, put them away the third set. We're winning the fourth set uh, until a long rally. And we just couldn't get our wits about ourselves and then came back and pretty much put them away the fifth set. Yeah, yeah, you, you do. Know. That's exactly what you did. You put them away the fifth set. And I, and I think the, the way I kind of saw it, from the stands, I guess. Uh, the first set, we, you know, we lost the first set, and, and maybe that stunned us a little bit because maybe we weren't expecting that, but we came back strong after that, and um, and then we started trading blows with them until we came out victorious there after the fifth, the fifth set, and it was definitely a very exciting game. And you've had a couple of those, uh, um, actually more than one that's been that, that, that exciting as far as a spectator position. They've been great matches to watch. Um, and the, you know what? And, and the crowds have been following. Yeah, the, we've the, had great support. The, you've had great support. The crowds have been following the, the, the team, and um, it makes it fun with that. And I know you have some you have some fans in the audience that are really, really bad and loud. I don't know who that would be, but there's, there's a yeah, few I of them kept, out there. I kept hearing <laughs> double last night, and I wanted to look back and see who it was. Yeah, but. yeah. so uh, we, we need to get control yeah. of our fans. But it, it's a fun time. Uh, you guys out there listening, if you, you want to go see some exciting exciting stuff, you need to come watch these volleyball games. I know a lot of people have been coming out, and, and they're definitely getting their money, money's worth. So, um, and, and you're still rolling. You have, um, you're getting healthier. We are. Your team's getting healthier. You're getting people back on the court. Um, and you've got a, next Friday, you have an off date. So, um Yes. No, no game. How do you, how do you, how do you approach that? 
Um, I think it's a good thing. I think um, we can have shorter, more intense practices. Uh, we have an extra day to practice. Um, I feel like it gives us an opportunity. Um, we finish the end of the first round of district on Friday. That's right. And then, you know, Uvalde is always a battle. I feel like that's more of a rivalry than, you know, Hondo per se. Um, and then I think it gives us a full week to prepare and get healthy and get our feet on the ground and, and try some different things. Like we're working on running a faster offense. Um, we know that everybody's game plan is to take us out of our game plan. You know, if, if it, we're going to match hitter for hitter, we're – we're going to outmatch everybody because we have more hitters. Um, so they have to take us out of our game, get us into um, an out-of-system offense, and hope that we make mistakes. So let's talk about the schedule you have upcoming here real quick. Uh, Friday, Southside at home. Um, Southside's a good team. They are. Then they have a middle. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to stop that. Um, they're not obviously going to be as good as Harlan. Um, if you look at the district competition and see who played who and who beat who, it's it's insane. It is. You know? It is. They, uh, Southside showing the record showing to be 16 and 10 overall, and they're five and two in district. So they've they've got a winning district record, and and from what I can tell, they've beaten the same teams basically that we've beaten. So it's going to be you're going to have a tough time, I believe. So we're, uh, we're going to have to be on top of our game approaching Friday's game. They they beat Southwest three to one, and we had a tough time against Southwest. I think ours was a three two. Right. Victory but against Floresville beat them. Yes, Floresville beat them. Beat them. So it's you don't know who's going to show up. And Coach Greg, you mentioned speeding up your offense. What what do you do? Explain to the audience. What do you do? What do you mean by speeding up your offense? How do you speed up your your offense? Well, our ball control has to be good. So our you know our emphasis on is on first ball contact, which is either digging or receiving a pass. So we want to put it in a position where our hitters can go on touch instead of at the height of the ball. So it's it's faster, it's coming over the net faster. It doesn't give them as much time to set up an offense or you know, maybe we can hit a split in the block. If the block is bigger than we are, um, it gives us an opportunity to get the ball over the net quicker. And then you follow up south side uh, with on Tuesday, like, um, Uvalde at home. Mm -hmm. So in the next two games, Friday, Southside at home, and then Tuesday against Uvalde home. So like you said, Uvalde starts the, the first district game of the second round. Uh, we beat Uvalde 3-0 last time. Th this I can almost see Uvalde as a, as a trap game. Uh, like you had said, you don't know what... I'm you, glad it's home. Yeah, it's at home. <laughs> it, it, we could go go into that you know overconfident I think uh, they don't have a very good record but in the way volleyball goes if, if one team's down uh, you can get that can get taken advantage of right it's a game of momentum and uh, whoever keeps the momentum the longest is typically going to be the winner I like where she went with that there are strange things that happen in Uvalde when you play sports there it doesn't matter <laughs> football volleyball basketball there were some mm -hmm. weird things happen there yeah it's a twilight zone yeah let, let's talk about your your underclassmen um, right now. Um, the JV and freshman teams they're they're both doing really good. They are. They um, are. Uh, they've they've really they've had some close matches. I don't think the record is quite, is quite as good as is the the varsity, but they've all played them really close, and those have been fun games to watch too. And actually, there have been some decent crowds watching those games. Um, you have a big middle school tournament this weekend. They do. Um, both middle schools are going to go to U Valley and play in a tournament. So, um, you know, we've got eight teams traveling over there. So that's exciting. Okay. You guys have any other questions? Mm -mm. Thank you, Coach Griggs, for visiting with us again. Hopefully you can come back in the next week or two, and we'll do it all over again, and we'll do an update on how you guys are doing. I want to see you guys keep rolling. Um, again, it, it, they're 6-1 and one in district, and we're, we're not just pushing for a playoff spot anymore. We want to win district, don't we? Yeah, so our goal, we have, like, this ladder to success. Um, you know, first it's to get in, and then it's to win, and then it's to win a playoff game. So in the process, we'd like to get 30 wins on the season, which hasn't been done in a long time, if ever. Um, so we're just taking it one game at a time. We're preparing for Friday. We can't, you know, look. You want to begin with the end in mind, but you want to keep what's in front of you the most important thing. Great. Uh, thank you. And before you leave real quick, I want to invite everyone listening out there to go to SA San Antonio Express News or their, their uh, website. Um, Cameron is up for Athlete of the Week. 
Yeah, that was picked by the sports writers. That, that's that correct. Cool. So uh, San Antonio Express News celebrates all their athletes and the great work. Cast your vote today for the top male and female athlete of the week. Cameron is up against uh, a young lady from Reagan and also a young lady from Clemens, I believe. So uh, go to the website, and I think Jeff's got a link to our to our website and maybe Facebook where you can go on there and vote for Cameron for the athlete of the week. It's uh, Cameron, I think, some stats for the week. I think, let me see if I can find them real quick. Maybe I won't find them. There she is. Uh, she combined for 16 kills, 28 assists, and 18 digs, and four aces in the wins over Eagle Pass win and Somerset. So you guys go online, go to the website, and vote for Cameron for Athlete of the Week. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you. We're just going to keep – you want to take a break? Or we, we can keep on rolling. Let's take a break. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll come back with a couple of the players. Uh, we'll return in just a moment. possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night, electricity plays an important role in our lives. But most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at MedinaEC.org. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Sammy's as we're moving on to a couple of the volleyball players, and Dwayne's going to introduce them now. Great. <laughs> All right, I want to interview a couple of the volleyball players, um, Olivia Garza and Megan Hahn. Megan, since you have the microphone first, let's talk to you a little bit. Um, what grade are you in, Megan? I'm in 11th grade. Okay, and what position do you play? I play a middle blocker. Okay, explain to us what a middle blocker does. So basically, I am the taller person that plays in the middle, and my job is to go from pin to pin or side to side and close the block or help set up the defense for our team. Okay, yes, exactly what do you Now, you're one of our main blockers. You, you, you play hard up front. You do a really good job of blocking the ball. When you get the opportunity, you hit very well, too. Um, let's talk a little bit about... I'm going to put, put you on the spot a little bit. Talk, talk about your coaches. We have amazing coaches. I actually want to address that we had a recent coach, our JV coach, that has been with me and Olivia since we were in seventh grade. And she just recently left and moved. So we pulled in a new JV coach, and her name is Coach Stein. And I really think when Coach Griggs chose Coach Stein to be her assistant, she chose really well because she really gets our adrenaline pumping. She's really just has really high energy. And just She's really very enthusiastic. That, that is correct. And um, as for Coach Delavar, she played D1 volleyball, and everything she tells you, you just take it in because she knows exactly what she's talking about. You can tell she was a disciplined player, and she works really hard. And as for Coach Griggs, I have been with her technically since I was itty bitty but for two to three years now and she's amazing like I wouldn't want any other person as my head coach she really just gets everything across and she really wants you to meet your goal and if she told me right now to run five miles I would run five <laughs> miles <laughs> uh, it, it'll, it'll back up a little bit Co coach Delavar I think she does a great job um, on spotting the serves definitely, definitely. Um, I know you all really try to pay attention to it and I think that helps quite a bit because she really studies 
the, the, the receiving side and, and tries, I guess, to find a weak spot. Is that what she's trying to do? Yes, and basically before every game, she watches and she lets us know what hitters we need to look for, what their defense is like, how their offenses run. And then she calls the spots for the servers, and most of the time she gets aces for us. She gets a lot of aces. You guys are doing really well as far as aces goes. Great. Um, so, Me Megan, you've been on the – this is your second year on the varsity. Yes. You're, you're a junior. Um, kind of explain what do, you, what do you think the difference is between this year's team and last year's team? Definitely I want to say the relationship between the players. I think it flows a lot well than it did last year, the – Energy is just a lot better. Um, we get along a lot better. There's not as much fighting. I just think all around we come together. It's a really strong team this year. What um, what other sports do you play, Megan? I play basketball and track. So you're, you're going to go one right after the other, huh? Yes. Do you have every time have time to rest? Not really, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Mom, mom takes good care of you, so um, you're you're good to go for the for the next sport. Um, you're feeling okay now. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Great to hear that. So, other than the the sports activities, what what else are you involved in in school? NHS, and I do this other club. Or it, we have this new math club that we're getting into as juniors, Mu, Mu Alpha Theta, and then me and Olivia actually write in a club called FPS, which is Future Problem Solvers, and we write in a group together. And actually, we have been one of the few people that have made it to internationals. Wow. Yes, you'll have. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got, academically, we've got the brains of the team here today. Is that correct? What, what, um, what, what is your class rank? Ten. Um, and Olivia, what's your class rank? <laughs> Fifth. So we do. We, we've got a couple of really smart girls here today, and and you know, and and I, that plays well into the sport. I mean, you've you've got to be smart. I know both of y'all really know what your positions, and you know what all the positions do. So I mean, that helps a lot. That helps you on on the, on the court quite a bit, and I'm sure your coach would agree with that. So okay, so if you want to hand the uh, the mic over to uh, Olivia, and just uh, so anyone that does not know, uh, Olivia is my daughter. So uh, I'm, uh, this may be kind of a weird interview for both of us, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's your position, Olivia? Um, I'm a defensive specialist. Okay, good. So what does a defensive specialist do? I play back row. I pass. So back row, and, and you're limited to back row, and what limits you to the back row? I'm short. <laughs> yeah, that's probably <laughs> the, the, the main reason. But on the other, on, but on the, on the other hand, um, I think the back row person is has got to be athletic, and you've got to you've got to be able to move to the ball uh, quickly. So it, it's, it doesn't mean that that you're you're just because your height doesn't mean you're not a quality player. Um, same thing, um, the coaches. Um, I know you always talk well about the coaches. Um, talk to talk to me about your coaches a little bit. Um, I'm very lucky to have always had great coaches. Like Megan said, when I was in middle school and when I was on JV. Um, we had Coach Husky, who played for UTSA, and I learned a lot from her. And this year we have Coach Delavar, who played for Cincinnati, and she is an amazing volleyball player, super smart. Everything she tells you is right. Like, I've learned so much from her. And this year Coach Stein is new to me. I've never dealt with her before. And she, like Megan said, is full of energy and super enthusiastic. And I think she's a great fit for our program because I feel like some of us lack a little bit of energy. And so she definitely brings us that to the table. And of course, Coach Griggs, and I'm not just saying this because she's sitting, standing right, sitting right there. It's, she's an amazing coach. And I'm so lucky that she's been there to like, encourage me and the rest of the team and push us to do our best. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I know, you know, just, just from, from the, the home front, talking from the home front, you, you're playing with high expectations this year. Um, and, and just because I know your past a little bit and on the freshman team and the JV team that you've played on previously, not a whole lot of wins. And, and it goes for your club level, too. You were on a team that, that wasn't really winning a lot of games, but it, it helped you because you got a lot of playing time. So uh, I know you're playing with some high expectations. What, what, what are, you, are you expecting from this team this year? Um, to make it to the playoffs and to win a playoff game, for sure. Well, let's hope we can do better than that. So, yeah, I mean, I, th I, think, I think the team has the talent to do that. Um, so other activities, what, what else do you do? We um, talked about Megan a little bit, and let, let's talk about what you do other than volleyball. Uh, 
I'm super, super involved in FFA. When I'm not playing volleyball, I'm either looking at cows or public speaking for FFA. Um, I do FPS and NHS and Mu Alpha Theta, like Megan said. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it, huh? Just <laughs> little, y'all don't do a whole lot. Oh yeah. Um, I want to. Y'all have any questions, guys, for these girls? Nope. nope. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank y'all for coming out, um, and I and the best of luck to y'all. And and I hope that y'all meet y'all's expectations. And I think y'all will. I think y'all, like I say, y'all got a quality team. Um, good luck against Southside, and good luck against U Valley coming up. And don't forget that uh, prior to the varsity game, the JV and freshmen are also playing in the other gyms. They they start at five thirty. Um, followed by the varsity, five o'clock, I'm sorry, they start at five o'clock right after that. And if you want to get some weekend volleyball action in, the, the middle schools will be going and the, that'll be in Uvalde, is that correct? Okay, there'll be tournaments going in Uvalde. So thanks again to all the volleyball people who came out today to join us. Yeah, thanks girls and thanks Coach Griggs for being here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break and then we're going to come back with our community corner and uh, you're listening to the Medina Valley Broadcast Network and we'll continue in just a moment. Visit MVBN.net for great articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at MVBN.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Casasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Casasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. You're Watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. I'd like to take this chance to thank them again for letting us put this show on here every week. It's It's been really great being here, and we look forward to the weeks to come. Uh, we're going to move on to our community corner, and we have Mr. Royce Grove here. Thank you for joining us here this evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. Yep, um, and Dwayne... Uh, yeah, I've got some. Off, sure, I've got there. I've got some questions for him. Um, before you start any questions, Mr. Grove, I want to thank you personally for, um, I guess, being in the community. You've done a great job throughout the years, and I know you've supported youth sports forever. Um, and and I don't think you get enough recognition for what you do. Don't and, expect. And that. I know you don't expect it, but you deserve it. And you've done a great job, and your sons do a great job of representing the community and sponsoring baseball and the football and all the youth sports that are around here and not not just the youth sports but the churches and and everything else that the, you're very community oriented person and i want to thank you that before we get into anything well, thank else thank you thank you i appreciate that um okay so here's my questions to you what which high school here did you go to i'm sorry which high school did you go to uh, me i went to to uh st louis high okay so you're which was a tough tough ball club team and in every sport. It, yes, they and were. from there I went to uh, St. Mary's University okay. in San Antonio. So St. Louis, St. Louis High School, what um, what sports did you play? We we had baseball, we had football, and, and we had uh, a basketball court. We only had one basket, though. You had <laughs> 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 but we, we played, and, and uh, we competed. Did you play in all the sports? Every sport. And every sport. And truck. But, but uh, we could only win three events, you know, in the truck so <laughs> back then. So that so kind of went out. So, uh, so what years did you attend St. Louis? I graduated in 58. Okay, you graduated in 58, and you were a Comet, is that correct? The St. Louis Comet? St. Louis Comet. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your rivalries. The rivalry that we had primarily was St. Gerard's out of San Antonio. Really? Yeah, they were the, they were the big dog and, and real good athletes and good people. 
and they were tough. And next to them was Lacoste. Lacoste was always a tough now, team. The Lacoste Eagles, is that correct? Yeah, they had they had good boy, good athletes. Well, that's what the reason that that Medina Valley is where it is today. The combination of St. Louis and and uh, Lacoste High and Casterville High, you know, we had three of the best teams in the country. So the other team here in town was the Casterville Wildcats. Casterville Wildcats. And that was the public school in, in, that's, in right. that's right. That's right. So it was the Lacoste Eagles, the Casterville Wildcats. And the St. Louis Comets. And the St. Louis Comets. And you now were all three teams in the same district? Or, or we just, it was, was there even just district? They just played. Played. Who else, who else would y'all have games against? Well, we, it, in football, we we played teams like like uh, Central, and we played uh, Shriner Institute, and a number of those teams. But and then McCallston, and those guys had the own. So they were they were state teams. Schools. So the the St. Louis the the school is still where it's at. Is that correct? To the fifth grade, I think it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. but that's where you, that's where the school is located when you're there. Yeah. Where were your fields at? We had a. A field, a field up where where the where the the elementary school is up up here in Casterville, across the street to the north. There was a was it, right now it's a it's a softball field we all play. Okay. Softball. That was our uh, football field. Now, did y'all share that field with the Wildcats? The Wildcats had a pretty field across the street from us. Oh, did they really? <laughs> yeah, we always tried to get them over to play with them. They didn't want to play with us. <laughs> now, your, your your games, all daytime games, no lights? No, we played night. Oh, y'all had night games? We had night games. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. So, after after um, after football season's over, by the way, uh, any championships in football? Uh, how did the Comets do those years while you were there? Well, back then we couldn't really could win district or whatever you want to call it. We what was your best record? Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> we well, let me say this: we were constantly in the in the in the light and the express rankings. Oh and wow! We also had had players that that had scores and yards and stuff that that were really set up in the state levels. So did we represent? Yes, very well. We had some tremendous athletes. So I know, I, and I've always heard that. I've always heard that, that y'all had some really good athletes, not the biggest kids in the block, but y'all had some really talented athletes. Very competitive. Yeah, they very were very competitive. competitive. So on the baseball season, so you played baseball. Where was the baseball field located? Baseball field was just right across the fence from where the football field was. <laughs> so er everything was there on the west side of Castro by the elementary school. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so you played... Um, from what I understand, you were a very talented baseball player, and you moved on to St. Mary's. Yeah. Played, and you played, played baseball St. for St. St. Mary's also. Yes. Um, how many years did you play at St. Mary's? I played four years. You played four years there? Yeah. Um, what did you enjoy most, football or baseball? I love football. Did you? I love, well, any sport, any sport that's competitive, but I just love to hit, and, and I, I, I like football. Do you, um, tremendous. do you still have your letterman's jacket? I've got all four of them. And I, my dad said the same thing. Y'all got one every year, is that every correct? Every year, every year. Do they still fit? <laughs> I think now it might. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a little weight. So let, let's um, let, let's talk about um, another generation. Uh, um, your kids, how many boys and girls? We got four boys and one daughter. And uh, we got, thank God we have the opportunity to watch them all, participate in all the sports of Medina Valley, and also had the opportunity then to watch all the grandsons. We've got our last grandson playing now, too. So tell me, your, your kids uh, have, have made their mark also in this community of playing sports. So uh, let, let's go down the line. Jeffrey? Jeffrey was a heck of a baseball player and a, and a tremendous football player, too. And J Jeffrey went on to play... Um, he went to St. Mary's and, and got a scholarship. He played ball at St. Mary's. What position did you play in baseball? He played third base. And you? I caught. You were a catcher. So And he played third base, and he, and he played a number of years in, in, at St. Mary's also. Um, and and um, next one down, Michael? 
Michael. Uh, I, I, I actually played a little bit with Michael. We were a couple years apart. Michael was a great athlete, also played football and baseball. Yeah, and then he went to UT. And he went to UT, that, that's correct. Um, next one down. Terry. Terry. And Terry was an outstanding shortstop for St. Mary's. I, I actually was played I mean, a couple of years with Terry at the high think, school. Man, he Terry was, a, was an all-state baseball player. That is correct. And um, and he went on to play at St. Mary's, and, and and he had some accolades over there, too. I know he, he, right. he did a great job at St. Mary's. Um, next one down. Carlton. Carlton. Can we skip him? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he, 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 uh, he, he's like the acorn that fell off the tree. He loved to hit. He, he, he his his hit passion was football. Football. And, and uh, he, I told him, man, you ought to go maybe play some baseball. He said, no, I want to try football out of high school. I think he, I don't know what he weighed. I think he weighed 150 pounds. Yeah, he may have been 152, maybe just a little bit more than that. We went up in, in uh, Tarleton State. They looked at him and they said, I don't know, let's look at some film. So we showed him some film and uh, they signed him up. I've never seen a guy hit someone as hard as I've seen, seen Carly hit a guy on a kickoff one day. He hit somebody so hard, and, and I, th I think there's a story out there where, where Carly met that gentleman. By then he was a gentleman, an older guy, and um, he confronted Carly. He goes, I want to show you something. And he lifted up his shirt, and the guy had a scar going all the way up and down. Carly had hit him so caved hard, it. he caved his chest caved in. Caved his chest in. And, and Carly was apologizing. He goes, no, no, man, it was a great hit, but I'd never seen anyone hit somebody so hard, especially that size. Oh, he, uh, he, he loves to hit. He loved to play. Well, he, he's so competitive in the game. And well, he still are, is. Are, and the, he still is, I believe. Are. Oh, yeah. So, um, grandsons. I mean, you... Melinda. 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 Let's not forget about Melinda. Melinda. See, I, I, I didn't know Melinda that well, so she tell was, me about she Melinda. She was like the volleyball and, and the softball. She played in the basketball. and She, she played all the sports, she, too. Yeah. Well, and she's the one standing there encouraging all the, the grandkids to go, so... So, grandkids, you had one just come off a junior college national national championship. He he made the the, the all American baseball team. No, he was the, the WAC and the national. Yeah, a, after junior college, he w uh, played for New Mexico State University. Yeah, and he was uh, he made it into the the, the the playoffs. Yeah, and he was given uh, the award uh, of, was it second team All-American? Second team All-American all and All-WAC. The WAC pitcher, WAC pitcher, of, pitcher of, the year. Of, the, of the year. And he has a national championship at which junior college? Tyler Junior College, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. And, and, and he pitched. And a no-hitter in the, in the president's All-American team. And he actually pitched in the national championship game, yes, is that correct? Did. And he won the last game. Yes, he did. Okay, so um you've got quite <laughs> it's it's so exciting it's hard to, to and, and you know and, and and there's a few of you parents that i see uh, uh go grandparents now that that you still don't miss anything you still try to make all the game every whether, game whether every you have game. kids or not and especially if you do have kids i mean you're 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 there for almost every activity that and you you, you support your your family and your community jeff did you have a question yep I don't know. Can anybody hear me? Oh yeah, you're good. You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to say, uh, you know, thank you to uh, Royce and the Grove family for, uh, you know, helping Medina Valley Broadcast Network get this off the ground and running. What we're doing here is no different than what you guys years ago started for our community. You know, we're starting something new here with our community, and and it's because of guys like you that uh, had the uh, vision years ago that we were going to build this community around uh, our sporting events and our schools and, and everything that we do. And, we you know, we'd definitely like to say uh, thank you to you and uh, your wife, Patsy, and uh, for being a, a supporter of what we're doing here and what we're doing here for the kids. So we thank you. We, we really appreciate that. And, and anything we can help you guys are doing, we're here, well, 100%. And, Royce, Medina Valley has a state championship in football. We haven't had one in baseball yet, but Medina Valley is, is known for baseball. You and a couple of our parents 
were responsible or partly responsible for getting the Youth Baseball Association started. Give us a little bit of history on, on well, who, who do we need to to look look at as the creators of Medina Valley Youth Baseball because right now they have basically 700 and something kids that, that sign up and play and that is just tremendous. Well, it's really ironic because I'm, I'm, it's going through my mind but in this building not this nice it was the first one that was ever built we were sitting here with a group of guys asking that question and and we we formed a group that went to the city and we asked the city if we could rent long term the airfield and Miss Green was the secretary at that time and she don't get, didn't get much credit but I worked with her for about six to eight months and she was putting in request to the Federal Aviation to give us the right to put in lights and a ball field and everything and we got it and once we got it and the contracts in place and the city agreed to it that's how that started being built but it's like everything else how, how people can generate other people we had city public service we had everybody and their uncle hauling sand and caterpillars and everything to to do it. It's just a multitude of people that, that did a tremendous job that it started right here, sitting right in this building. Well, and, and you mentioned some of the CPS and and when you mentioned those people, those people, that was their livelihood, but they donated their time. Absolutely. Because, and, and, and you know, I'm going to mention a couple of names. You know, I remember Johnny Bipper. I remember Dennis Haby working for CPS. But when they were finished working, hung, I don't know, you know hung, it, hung the lights and uh, stuff. You know, they it, hung it all. And, they and, did everything. And you know, it, it was amazing how they would they would request work. But I don't know how the work created at the airfield. That's how we got work done. They would come out, you know, and and, and, and Dwayne's dad and 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 my dad may rest in peace. But I mean, all of you guys out there got it together. And what people don't realize is when the league first started, there was no umpires. There was nothing. I mean, there was the, four, the people was, from the crowd, the, 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 the parents came and did the umpire. There was a ball field at Real Medina, little ball field. There was one behind the school over there in Lacoste. We had a little one up here. And, and Medina Valley was being formed. They were consolidating with Lacoste and, and Casterville and Rio. And we said, let's move all the ball playing together out here. And that's how that all transformed and come together. Wow. And it worked good for the... It's it's getting to the point now, Royce, where we're outgrowing that facility. Uh, well, we do I mean, you know property. what I mean? We, yeah. Yeah, we, we have actually, uh, like Maury said, we were close to 700 kids out there. and. Right now, this fall, we have over 10 teams playing out there right now, fall ball. <clears throat> so it seems like, uh, you know, we just keep growing. And, and it, you know, there again, because of uh, people like you that uh, helped get all this and had the vision to get all this started, and we sure do appreciate it. It was a group of guys. and, and uh, but, but, you know, in the city of Casterville and, and Lacoste and this area here, it, all you had to do is ask or come up with an idea and people are going to participate I mean we got the support yeah is they'll, unbelievable they'll be, they'll be there to do it and we do every year we have people out there you know busting their tails uh, to help you know and, and and I always hear this said why, why do you why do you volunteer out here why do you do this stuff out here because my parents did it before me amen and yep. and and you hear that on and on and on you know my parents did it for me I'm gonna do it for my kids and the rest of the kids that are out there but now it's my grandpa or my grandma did it Absolutely. I mean yeah. that's the generations that it's you know that it's it's going to and and how many years have you been in business 54 years 54 years and, and I supported it every day and and I can remember when when you know, it started from a little bitty warehouse 
in the middle of Casterville, you know, and, and the old green truck that you'd load the all bells on and the tailgate was all bent and you had to do it. And, and it's just... We it, come home from, from the service and landed and went and bought a business and started it. That's now, it. just to not put you on the spot, but just... I want to ask about your significant other. I want to ask about your wife. She's been there the whole time. Side by side. Tell me about her. Well, she, she's she's number one, the best friend a person could possibly have. She's my wife, but she is a business lady, and and a lot of people say, how in the world can y'all work together all day, every day, and then party and then. But, but I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's, if you love somebody and, and, and you appreciate what the other person can do and is willing to do, and you do things together, it works. Would you have the success you've had without her? No, absolutely not. But that's, that's, that's it. in that's everything we do. You know, you talk about Red and Johnny and, and stuff, how it went out there. I couldn't have got those lights and poles and stuff and everything donated and put up if it wouldn't have been for those people. Same thing with Rodney Haby and those people on the electric that put the lines in out there. It's uh, uh, Mr. Nestor, you know, with his, with his machines to, to do all the work. And that's how it all works. Yeah. Community yeah. effort. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's one of the things that's always kept me wanting to stay here over the years you know my my, my grandparents went to st louis also sure, my, my grandma sure. went there and, and her brothers sure and uh, my dad stayed here most of his life all his life and that's what keeps me wanting to come here is the way the community interacts with each other and, and that's why i love this place and i, I don't want to leave it that's funny you mentioned that because when we moved here 30 years ago my family moved here my dad, we live right on the line, Hondo and Medina Valley, and my dad asked all of us, he said, would y'all rather go to Hondo? They have a great winning tradition over in Hondo, or would do y'all want to go to Medina Valley and start a new tradition, or help start a new tradition? And well, we were like, well, let's go to Medina Valley, and so we all went to Medina Valley, you know, and, and it's because of what people like this have done for our community and the, and the reputation that our community has with everybody. But, you know, another, another thing to what you're saying there, that's very true, that Hondo and Devon really were two forceful mm -hmm. cities and, and businesses and, and ball clubs too. They were a challenge and that, that made us grow a hell of a lot quicker too and made things happen and it, it worked. So you can beat Hondo. That was the big <laughs> well, well, you know, well, well, Royce, let me throw this in there because I don't think you guys mentioned this earlier, but you know the all-time record now it used to be very lopsided mm -hmm. in football. Okay, it, it's the all-time record now is Medina Valley 31, Hondo 28, and one tie. Yeah. So just a little bit of info there for you guys. Uh, we used to play Devon baseball down there. You know, they always thought football was pretty tough, and they had a they had a ball ball field with a fence. And most of ours didn't have fences. Cord patches. Yeah, cord patches. So so. Oh, Leslie Cheerhard was in, in right field one time, and, and I knocked one over him, and and uh, he couldn't get it because he had his fence up, but he's, he complains about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> was what, was the what was on the other side of the fence? <laughs> was it was nothing? It was sad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they were very competitive. That's that's what makes it makes it go, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're gonna let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come back and uh, and wrap things up with uh, Mr. Mr. Grove. Yep, you're listening to the broadcast network, and we'll be back in a moment. Vite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597. 
or online at DoubleTHunting.com. When you put money in our bank, you started a chain reaction. We made an auto loan. A local car dealer sold a car. A car salesman got a commission. His wife bought groceries. The checker at the supermarket got a paycheck. You made that happen. Thanks. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at CastrovilleStateBank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Sammy's Restaurant as we've been talking to Mr. Royce Grove here, and I think Dwayne wants to go ahead and give you. Do you want to close him? Yeah, we can close him out. Do y'all have any more questions for? No, I'm Royce? good. I mean, uh, Mr. Grove, I want to thank you for for joining us, and this is exactly what we want to do. For our community corner, we want to, you know, there's a lot of people who don't understand the history and the background of, of how things came together here and, and about Medina Valley sports in general. And and I wanted to give you a little recognition because you're you're one of the, the, the main guys that got this thing going and, and and you still support it. So thanks again for doing that. And we want to thank you thank for coming you. out. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, don't be surprised if we ask you out to come out again. I, don't, yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah, we enjoyed that I'd a like lot. I'd like to participate. Yep. Thank, thank you for being here. We we really appreciate it. Stick around if you want to stick around. I will. Um, I think uh, Dwayne's got an update for you on the. Yeah, cross I just want to give uh, some of the other sport. You know, we 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 talked in the other um, shows about trying to get some of the other sports involved, and we had the cross country team l last week. And I just want to give a little bit of update on what happened last week. Medina Valley hosted their own meet last week uh, on Saturday, and. Um, it, it got a little wet, so uh, and I and, and I made a couple of phone calls to get an update on it. And uh, the update they gave me it was muddy, it was mucky, it was nasty, and it was yucky. <laughs> it, it rained quite a bit on those guys, and what they ended up having to do is that the mid the middle school part of it was canceled. So the middle school did not run this past weekend at Medina Valley's first Invitational, but uh, the JV and the varsity, the boys and girls ended up running together. So they put they grouped them all together, and they ran it because of the weather. And um, I'm pleased to announce that with a the, the couple of the uh, runners that we interviewed last week, both came in first place. Macy Livingston broke her personal best record. Um, she placed first place. She broke her 20-minute mark. She ran a 1946, wow. which is great. Congratulations, Macy, on, on doing that. And I told you guys last week, if, if you all did good, we'd talk about it. Um, we'd talk about it here on the show. And the boys, we also interviewed Josh Sandoval. And he came in first place also. He ran a 17 uh, 23. And I've got a, let me go, I got a little update on, um, I think they had about 70 runners that came in and they all braved the elements this past Saturday. Like I said, they ran through a bunch of rain and everything. Um, Josh Sandoval ran a 17 23. Seth Hernandez ran a 17 43. And uh, he was also here. We interviewed him. And Mason Forrest ran an 18 27 from Benina Valley. Um, those were the, the top finishers on the boys' side from Nina Valley. On the girls' side, Macy Livingston, I said she had a 1946. Um, Kayla Cor Corliss ran a 21.36. And Michaela Chafin, who we interviewed also, ran a 21.47. So that they led the girls. So four, all four students that we had here interviewing last week placed uh, um, in, the, in the, their tops of, the, of their running groups. So this weekend... Um, nearly 50 Medina Valley runners will leave. There. I think they're leaving this Saturday. At, they're leaving at 4 a.m. They're driving down to Corpus Christi. They're going to run in the 2018 Islander Splash Meet, and that's what we talked about. They're going to be running at Corpus Christi A&M, so we're going to wish them well. Um, it looks like we got some uh, we got some really good runners. Uh, I'm really proud of them, and I'll thank uh, Coach Bermea for, for coaching this group and visiting with us uh, last week and hopefully we can do uh, have them guys back too and talk about them at the end of the season and see how they how they're doing yeah and, and you know that's one of the things we've noticed on here that the players that we've had on here have always played well i'm telling in the you next they week have. they run well <laughs> in their meet so <laughs> so ho hopefully we'll see some of that from the kids that were here to here today yep. in their next game um i think are we going to move on now to our our just talk sports section segment of this yeah let's wind it down a little bit and let's talk about our sports it's 8 15 we got about 15 more minutes or so and if y'all want to talk about some sports and uh, 
Mari. We had a another week in the NFL, another good week of college football. A lot of things going on. The, the Astros with a five-game lead over Oakland now. What what do you want to talk about first? Well, I just want to once again congratulate uh, Mr. Eric Sosa, coach, and the kids that he brought, the young men, and Coach Griggs, and the two athletes he brought. And I want to thank Mr. Royce Grove for contributing to the show with the uh, community corner edition of it and it was well uh, appreciated so I want to thank all those. I uh, just want to get back to one thing um, two of y'all wouldn't make predictions last week on the Hondo Medina Valley game two of us two of us did Dwayne will you go ahead and, and tell us who, who was the closest? Well <laughs> <laughs> kind of put me on the spot. I had a 34 to 14 game um, and I was close. But, well, um, actually you said 28 to 14 I said 34 to 6. I said 34 14. Oh, he's going back in his notes. 34 14. Okay. And we can go back and go to the archives now and, and we can look it up. But, but Maury, both of you, you and I pretty much predicted the outcome in general, saying the Medina Valley is going to run away with this game. Well, when you had the defensive linemen here and they were as positive as they were. Yes. I, I didn't want to step out on a limb and say we were going to shut them out. I get, we, me and you both wanted to give them a little, you know, Hondo, a little bit of credit and think they were going to score. Of course, they did score, but they, they had both helped. had a little bow and gift wrapping yeah, those, on them both to touch those, down. Those so. two fumbles inside the 20 really, really helped them out a lot. And I think if Medina Valley really wanted to, that game could have been a lot worse than what well, it was. Let, let we did talk about the uh, the stats for the game, and defensively, we only gave up 130 some odd yards total. Yeah. So, so how, how do you? I was there. I was watching volleyball. Age. I listened to the game, but I was watching volleyball. So how, how did we? How do we look in the elements? We our first teams look very well. The teams that and that the reason I'm saying that is because we're going to have the same situation this week. Well, and and that's I mean, we had Coach Sosa here on the first week of the show. He said we want it to be windy, we want it to be rainy, we want to that's play right. in those things because that helps our offense. I tell you what was surprising though, Dwayne, was we came out and it was it was pouring down rain. Yep. We came out throwing the ball. Yep. We wanted to show right away that the elements weren't going to bother us. Yep. And uh, we came out. We, you know, we set the tone early. And that's what I said we last week. That we our pace, passing game is going to be instrumental in, in this week and that week against Hondo. And, and I said the same thing. And and the one thing, and we talked to Coach Sosa Erica here earlier. But one of the things they got to shore up. There were two touchdowns taken off the board because of penalties. Um, we had a 90-yard run by Masters that was negated because of a, a chop block. Well, actually, I, I watched the video on that, and they called uh, one of our players blocking behind the ball. He, really? He just peeled back and hit somebody, and they called him for unnecessary roughness. Ooh. And it was, I said it during the game, it was away from the play. It didn't affect the play. Number one, the official shouldn't have thrown the flag. Number two, the kids shouldn't have done that Yeah. because it didn't affect the play at but, all. But when you take points off the board, that's one of those things. When you get in a close game, especially against a team like Lockhart this week who's going to grind it out with you, you can't make mistakes like that yeah. in big situations. Well, and... and uh, uh, there were three occasions to where our kicker, the last man in, uh, in defense, had to make yeah. the stop. And, and you know, do you know, uh, do you know who that kicker is, Mr. Jones? <laughs> well, <laughs> and we mentioned that fortunately your kicker is one of your defensive specialists also. So it's not like he's a kicker per se, but when your kicker's making the stops, you got to sure up a, a little bit on the special yep. teams. Well, you cannot let them yeah. run the ball out to the 40, 45 yard line every time. You know, in this day and age, though, I'm sure they've reviewed film more than once, and and they're gonna the coaches are, are should be able to pick up on that and make some adjustments coming up against Lockhart. Yeah, um, predictions, guys. 21 to seven, Medina Valley. Ooh, last year was a 14 to seven game, correct? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at 21-7. I think we're going to keep continuing with the passing attack, and when that doesn't work, we're going to run it up the gut with Mr. Gibson, and we're going to give him a taste of a balanced offense. I think I'm going to predict 31-7 to because I think we're going to get in field goal range early, and we're going to want to put some points on the board, and I think we're going to kick a field goal. I think we're going to win 31-7. to 
I think it's going to be a, a close game that's going to come down to the end. I'm saying 21-20 Medina Valley. Ooh. And I, I think it's going to be one of those games that they're just going to grind it out against you with both offenses. And I think whichever team doesn't make the mistake in the end is who's going to come away with the win. Dwayne, make sure you write all these I'm down. down Maury. What was that, Maury? 31-7. to seven. Jared? 21-20. to 20. And I'm going 42-28. to 28. High score. And now we're going to ask our community corner, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Grove. Now, Mr. Mr. Grove. Grove, what do you see? I say it's going to be about 21 to 7. Okay. There you have it. And I'm, I'm, I'm considering that I don't think it's going to be wet. I know there's a 50% chance, but it's going to be spotty showers what, and what stuff. What type of field does, does Lockhart have? Is it turf? <coughs> Is it turf or grass? We know? I believe it's turf. It's I think turf. they added turf a couple of years yes. ago, and they re did the whole stadium and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it, it is, as I always mentioned, it is a nice stadium. Hey, and don't forget, go early. No. Come here. Eat dinner early here at Sammy's Restaurant because they're going to have some uh, specials. And then go over to Lockhart. Don't worry about that barbecue that over barbecue there. That barbecue is way too It's overrated. overrated. It is, it is overrated. overrated. And it's expensive. That's right. So just come to Sammy's and eat here. Last year when... When we saved everything till the last second to go eat over there, we got in there. They had no more barbecue. Uh, oh, yep. Ah. There you go. Well, there, there, you go. there you go. There they'll you run go. Out. They'll run out. So eat here where you know they'll have Absolutely. food. Absolutely. Come to Sammy's before. Yeah. Well, eat a victory burger before you head out there, and and you never know. Uh, well, let's move on to fantasy. Our fantasy hour with our fantasy guru now. Well, and I did. Give Dwayne some advice last week. Okay, so week. here's the situation. And it ended up <laughs> biting me. Oh, did you lose? Uh, we were playing with oh, I was you playing against home. Maury, and I, I asked for advice from the guru, and I said, do I play Pat, Patrick Mahomes over golf? And mm-hmm. he said, absolutely, and I played him, and I meet, beat Maury by not much, but I did beat him with a subpar team. Well, so part, part of that's because Maury had an injury on I had feet. a liquored up kicker that didn't even play. <laughs> So, more, yeah. more, what are your thoughts this week on fantasy? Uh, well, well, Dwayne's son had a question for you earlier about some defense. We got, and I don't think people know, we got Garrison working the, the board for us today. He's doing the, the computer and the, and the sound for us. And thanks for Garrison for coming out and helping Absolutely. us today. Absolutely. But if you, if, you stream a, if you stream a defense like you should every week, the defense to take this week would probably be Minnesota, which they're not, wouldn't be available. But Cleveland will be out there. And yeah, it's going to be Thursday night at home with the dog pound, prime time. And they're out. fired up, hey. Yeah, they're t- fired up. TV. Even though they're 0 and 2 and they're 1. They're close believe, game. They're, they're fired yeah, up. Yeah. Moy, Moy went out on a limb, and, and he told Garrison to go ahead and take Cleveland's defense this week. And if you really think about it, who they're playing, they're going to be hyped up. It's nas- it's on their national television. Mm-hmm. They're, they're doing well. They've got a lot of momentum going with Cleveland right now. So, um uh, and Garrison took the advice. I think he's going to play Cleveland's defense, at least for this week. There you go. And a couple of the other predictions that we discussed some games. I told you all that LSU was going to beat Auburn. Correct. Oh. TCU was going to stay within the cover. <laughs> Correct. I told Jarrett that he's not going to have a good trip to Waco because Duke is smarter than Baylor, and they were actually going <laughs> to beat them also. So there you go. Yep, Maury did say that, and, and I told you that Notre Dame would play down to Vanderbilt and, and have a close game, and they did, and, and i got to say, my, my girlfriend, we watched that game together, and I get pretty animated and pretty loud, and she goes, that is the worst I've ever heard you. I was I was pretty lit up toward the end of that game. But, but the game of importance this week, the UTSA Roadrunners against Dwayne's Texas Southwest State. Texas uh, – <laughs> Texas State Bobcats. Yep. Dwayne, let's hear your prediction. I'm going to come out r- right out with, with the score. It's going to be a 28-27 game. Ooh. And um, Roadrunners will come out on top. Oh, Ooh. wow. I, th- wow. I think the Roadrunners on paper have got the better team. Texas State is hurting right now. They didn't do too well against an FCS team. They did win the game, but they didn't They didn't play that well. They, they've got some positions that, that are holding them back a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I'd love for the Bobcats to win this game, but I do predict the Roadrunners' first victory of the year. So you're saying that, and are you also inferring that this may be it for the coach? 
I, I, I think he's on the hot seat, Jeff, and he's been on the hot seat. So, so. he hasn't – this is his third year, and they typically say if you don't produce in your third year, the first couple of years yeah. they give you for recruiting. Well, you got to show some kind of improvement. And, and there's yeah. not, we've had two win seasons for the last two years, and the improvement's not there yet. And we should have won last week against a average South Alabama team. And uh, we came out. We were winning most of the game, but it slipped through the, the cracks and, and came out on the, the bottom half, I guess, uh, towards the end of the game. So, uh, you know, they don't have any momentum going into this game. That's going to be up against them. And um, But the tailgating ought to be good. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I went to UTSA. Dwayne went to Texas State or Southwest Texas at the time. But, hey, uh, I've got both diplomas, so you can call cool. it whatever you want. <laughs> Um, actually, my, my last year at UTSA was the first year that Eric Sosa was there. That was the first year that UTSA had football, and I actually got to vote on a lot of things, and That's one of right. them was whether UTSA was going to have an orange field or not, and I voted no. Absolutely no, not. No, absolutely not. I'm not a fan of the blue field at Boise State, no. and I think Miami, Ohio has a red one. And I'm I'm not a fan of that, but I'm, well, I'm Eastern Washington does. Yeah, so that's does, right. So does Canyon High School. Yeah, that's the true. They have one too. Um, I think UTSA is going to win the football game. I think it's going to be I'm going to say 35 to 14. Um, UTSA's played two Big 12 schools and Arizona State from the Pac-12 yeah. in this year. Their offense has not looked good. They have nine people, nine freshmen playing on offense starting. When you have a young team like that, you, you're not expecting a whole lot from them, and they're still trying to figure out where their quarterback's going to be. I think their defense is going to be good yeah. enough to stop Texas State, but I think UTSA's offense is kind of going to get things together this week well, against an opponent that's not so strong. Well, there's 128 teams in Division One football. Ranked 128th are Texas State Bobcats. So, mm. um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's thanks, rough right there. Thanks, Dwayne. <laughs> Glad we just, that. just throw that out there. <laughs> so, um, y'all, if y'all don't win, <laughs> that doesn't look too good. But I do think the UTSA has a better team. I think they, I think they're a little bit deeper. And and I'll be honest, I think the coaching's a little bit better. Amari, well, who does who does Oklahoma have this week? Is that oh, wow. they, they they play the Black Knights of Army. Oh, really? I didn't. I honestly didn't know. But they you know they what Iowa State last week, and I know the, the score was a lot closer. I told you that. Oklahoma yeah, plays Iowa State plays Oklahoma close every year, and it yep. was a ten-point ball game. But this week we have the Black Knights of Army. Oh, that's I think that's going to be a shock. Tell you what, here, here's some college games for you <laughs> uh, this weekend. Um, hey, get ready, he's going to mention the Red Raiders. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, State, I'm just going down they? the list. I've got is this. This weekend's the twenty-second, correct? Yes. Okay, so I've got A and M at Alabama. That's going to be a, a shellacking. Royce, shellacking. what do you think of A&M and Alabama? Aggie's going to take them. Oh, there, there you go. In there. I, think, I think Alabama's a little too tough for them. <laughs> Here we go. Kansas State is at West Virginia. Do the Texas Not going to be can. close. Let's see if we can just limit it. Well, I'm just I'm going down my list here. Okay, here, here's a, here's another good one. And Notre Dame. TCU <laughs> at Texas. Ooh, it, uh, it's got to be TCU. I don't, I don't, I don't think Texas has depth yet to hang with TCU. I don't think Texas is going to score. Well, well, here's the thing: is you you don't know what Texas has. USC is one and two. You they don't lost, know, you don't they know they what team Texas is going to bring to the field. Exactly. They played very well in the second half against USC, but how good really is USC? And so I think TCU coming off a loss to Ohio State, they're going to be fired up, and they're, they're going to want to get a, a win, and I think they get it versus Texas. I think TCU has won the last three or four matches in a row against Texas. Uh, TCU was very surprising last week. I thought they played very well against a, a very athletic team. Ohio State team. And, you guys, that guy – and, and here, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's a prediction – I say that the next head football coach at the University of Texas could be wearing purple right now. Uh-oh. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, pockets are deep in Austin. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and you're right. Texas Tech is at Oklahoma State. You, you saying that you think that Gary I'm Patterson's going to end up at UT? I'm saying it's very possible. Well, it's been talked about before, but he hasn't left yet. No, he hadn't, and he signed a new contract a couple of years ago when yep. they approached him. But the pockets in Austin are deep, Austin. and they are going to get tired of... There's no bottom. There is no bottom. They're going to get tired. A&M just did the same thing. 
A&M's pockets well, were deep too. They went and got them what they thought, you know. And and what Texas did was they went and got the next hottest thing, the guy that was hot at the time. You know, they did. Yep, that's you know, exactly that's, that's what, what, they what did. a lot of people do. I mean, do people who have winning programs coming up, they, you want to go get Absolutely. them because they're Sometimes doing well. Sometimes it backfires. That's, that's very I'm true. True. That's very true. So Texas Tech's at Oklahoma State. That's fifty-eight to fifty-four, <laughs> right there. <laughs> take the pick your winner. Yeah, pick take, your winner. Take the over. <laughs> uh, Army's at Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. Oh goodness. How about North Texas? Uh, they've they're surprising. That yeah. is a surprising I've, team. I have never seen anything like that punt return last week. And, and if you take the punt return out of it, they they still yeah. o- overwhelmed Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, when you get a team like that beating an SEC school, I mean, even though they're they're not in the top of the SEC, they still beat a big program, and that's and big You deal. know, North Texas is like the Phoenix. I mean, they're coming out of the ashes to, to, to starting to beat teams, and I don't know how they got that team together, but the, it, it, it's interesting to watch them this year. They were strong, they were strong years ago. Years ago, they had and, good programs. And they're coming back. They're coming back. I see enthusiasm and the guidance and the coaching. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that coach won't last long if he continues to win games. I guarantee you that. Well, they uh, said that about the they said that about the Iowa State coach also. You know the Iowa State coach, and he stuck it out. He's still at Iowa State, and I think Iowa State's going to be a all right. Cowboys and Texans. Morning. Uh, Texans are going to win. Cowboys are going to lose. Does that's that, that's the best thing I could have heard. Is that all we need to hear? That. Jeff doesn't like that very much. I, well, I'm just trying to. You said the Texans are going to win. <coughs> Who they play, more? I said that earlier. They play somebody at home. I'd have to look it up again. Well, and the Cowboys play in Seattle, right? Yes. So, so Seattle's not very good. So if the da- if Dallas loses to them, that's not that's ooh, bad bad deal right there. But, uh, no, I, Tennessee is playing the Giants. I mean, the Texans are playing the Giants. What, what is your, what Giants, is, what what is is your lock pick Giants. of the week, Maury? Lock pick of the week, Oklahoma lay the number 31. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. We'll check back with you next week. <laughs> yep. And, all right. Uh, I think we're ready to yeah, wrap this ready up. Wrap I'd up. like to thank all of our guests tonight, and I'd like to thank Mr. Royce Grove here for staying with us for the rest of the broadcast. Um, I'd like to also thank Sammy's Restaurant for letting us have this game here and make it possible for us to bring you these broadcasts. Um, Just a reminder that this Friday night we will be in Lockhart. That game will be live right here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. The game is at 7.30. Our airtime will be at 7 o'clock. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that game. And if you can't make the football game, we have live volleyball at home against Southside. Yep. And then we'll be broadcasting live for the vault. Vol- we couldn't do this past week. We had some I- issues on, uh, on getting authority to broadcast against uh, last night at uh, Floresville. But our, ne- our next and first live broadcast for volleyball will be Friday, October 5th. And it will be at home. It will be against Southwest. Okay. Yeah, so you can tune in here to catch some volleyball and uh, the football game this weekend uh, Friday night in Lockhart uh, live here at 7.30 airtime 7 o'clock for like to throw a shout out to Merle back at the uh, Vibe Studios for making it possible for us to be here and for Garrison running our our computer board here thank you to him Um, for Dwayne and Mari and Jeff I am Jared Lucky saying good night God bless and we will see you Friday when Panther football continues